What's going everyone, John here and welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to stream directly off your PlayStation 5. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is go to settings and then inside of settings, we're gonna to go to users and accounts. In here, we'll go down to link with other services and you're gonna to wanna to link whatever place you're gonna be streaming on, whether that's gonna be Twitch or YouTube. Now, if you do run into the problem to where it doesn't load up the options to give like a stream title and to give other settings for your stream, go ahead and unlink it and relink it again. I had this problem myself with YouTube and I had to go and unlink it and relink it and it fixed the problem. So once you have everything linked, you're going to go ahead and go back into your settings. We're going to go all the way to the bottom to captures and broadcasts. In here, we're going to go down to broadcasts, and here's where you're going to find several extra settings. Now, you can still get to these settings in the broadcasting area, which I'll show you in just a second, but I wanted to at least show you where you can find it here as well, since it's pretty convenient. So here, for your video quality, you'll have four different options, and for me, if you're going to be doing 1080p at 60fps, you're probably going to want to have at least five upload, and that way you'll be able to keep a 60 fps stream without having any problems but i still say give it a test see how it works and then if you have to drop it down to one of the other options for your audio you can include the voice chat audio and this will include like video clips and broadcasts will include all audio from players in voice chat who will allow their voices to be shared so if you want to have your party and stuff like that that should be able to get brought in there for your camera, now I personally don't have the PlayStation 5 camera. I tried using a Logitech C920 and that did not work at the time of this video. Maybe it will work later on, I'm not sure. Um, I do plan on getting the PlayStation 5 camera, just not at this time. But essentially it does give you some pretty cool options here. So when you have it enabled, you can adjust the different size of the camera. You can add a clipping mask so you can actually have some type of really interesting type of cutouts and shapes for your camera versus just the traditional square. But what's really cool is chroma key. For those of you guys who don't know what chroma key is, it's basically what is used for green screens. So the PlayStation 5 camera, if you have a green screen, will allow you to use chroma key so you can get rid of your background, which is extremely cool. So that's actually something that's really nice and another reason why I kind of want to get the PlayStation 5 camera. You can flip it, you can add effects. So you have all these different types of effects that you can add to it. You can adjust the brightness, contrast, and transparency. So this is really cool. And if you needed to refocus on your face whenever you have the PlayStation 5 camera, I don't know if this will work with USB cameras whenever they are supported, then you might be able to try to refocus it there and then you can always restore to default. For your overlays, this is going to be for your chat overlay. So the chat overlay, I'm going to show you guys what that looks like. But essentially, it's individual bubbles. It's not the uh, way that we had it on the, on the PlayStation 4 where you would have everything on one side of the screen and you can see the chat and everything like that. And it, the, the chat bubbles do disappear on the PlayStation 5 version. And you guys will see that shortly as well. For the display activity, this shows you whenever you have new viewers. It shows you whenever like your viewer count changes and stuff like that. I personally say disable this, but I have it enabled just for testing purposes. And then for the overlay position, this is basically displaying your chat and whenever someone joins and leaves the stream and stuff like that. This is basically where it's going to be positioned on the screen. I personally found it to be better to have it on the center right, but that's just me. And then you have chat to speech. So this is good for anyone who is trying to do like VR and they can't read the chat. So having this kind of play in the background while um, while you're playing is really helpful. So you can have it to be different types of speed. You can change the pitch and you can adjust the volume. So once you have all that, then we're going to go to actually get everything set up. So you're going to have to launch a game. And once you have the game launched, then you're going to click on the three lines on the left hand side, that button. It's the share button, basically. Um, it's going to be right above the D-pad. So when you hit that, it gives you this options here. So you can save recent gameplay, take a screenshot, and you can start a recording. But you're going to want to go over to the right where it shows broadcast. 
Now, before you go into broadcast, you do have the capturing options. Now, this has a few extra things. Now, for here, if you take a screenshot, you can either have it as a JPEG or a PNG. For video clips, you can either have it be a WebM or an MP4. For the microphones for this type of stuff, you can either include your mic or you can include your party audio. I currently have them unchecked. Now for broadcast, when you click on broadcast, as you can see, I was testing on YouTube. If you want to ever go back to your other ones, click on the three dots, go to change service. This is what you'll see. So once you're ready to go ahead and start streaming, just go ahead and click on whichever one you want to stream on. So I'll click on YouTube. You can give it a title, description, you can add tags, you can change the privacy for it, but there's other options as well. So if you go back to the three dots and you see the broadcast options, click on that and now you have similar information. So you have it where you can display the camera, you have it to where you can display the chat, display activity, you can mess with the different overlay positions, you can include the voice chat, and you can also change all of the video quality. So I wanted to show you the two different ways of getting to that because it's important for you guys to know. And once you are ready to go ahead and start streaming, then you can go ahead and click on the go live. Now I already did this for testing purposes. So I'll kind of show you guys what that looks like now. So as you were able to see, you can tell that the overlay is on the, the right hand side, right center. You can see the icon very clearly. You can tell when, how many people are watching and you can see the username, the message, everything comes in really clear. So I like that it stays in bubbles. It separates itself a little bit and I like that it disappears. Now, something that I also want you guys to know is when you are streaming, you can still access this menu here and you can still record while you're streaming. You can also take a screenshot while you're streaming and I think that's really cool. And if you ever need to go into your actual gallery and everything like that, you can click on this and then what it will do is it will bring you into your media area. So you can either go right to the media gallery and you can edit, you can give it a favorite or you can delete it, but you can also expand this if you need to, or you can cycle through all the other ones you have by hitting L1 and R1. So that way you kind of have everything snapped there. Now this here, no one's going to see, they're only going to see the game. Now, one other thing that I want you guys to know too, is the tech to speech does not save whenever you guys finish a stream. And also the chat on the actual stream itself does not save. That is only an overlay system on the PS5. It does not go over into your past broadcasts. So do keep that in mind as well. But that is pretty much everything to get you guys started and to give you a pretty good rundown of the whole streaming directly off of the PlayStation 5. If there's more stuff that I find or anything that I realize that I may have missed, I'll go ahead and I'll let you guys know in the comments or if I feel like it requires a video, then I'll make another video for it. But if there's anything I did miss or if there's anything you guys have questions about when it comes to streaming on the PlayStation 5 or the PlayStation 5 in general, be sure to go ahead and ask me in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you go ahead, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more PlayStation 5 content and other streaming tutorials. And I'll see you guys all in the next video. Take care.